Happy Monday, fellow furniture dorks. I always have to check in my head. What the heck day what is it? What day that? is it? What day is today? Welcome, everyone. This is Teresa at Rave Home Collection. And I am Melissa Murrow with Rave Home Staging. And it is, now that I've figured it out in my head, Makeover Monday. It is Makeover Monday. We have fun stuff going on today. We do. I felt the need to be super creative today. And I felt the need to use Miss Mustard Seed Milk Paint. Which so, is her favorite. Yes. So Mine we're too. Have super fun today. Mine too. And I'm also going to have fun because I'm going to be blending with Bungalow 47. Yeah, one of her favorite things to do. She loves the blending feature of Bungalow. So that's going to be a fun little project. So for me, if anybody saw the video that I did on the giant Kraken table, I'm going to make a little baby Kraken on here. And I don't know what the heck she was talking about when she was talking about a Kraken. She's like, I want to do a baby Kraken, like the big Kraken downstairs. I'm like, that's a so I have to say, apparently it's a little juicy. I have to say, I thought you were a child of the 80s. Uh, for sure, but you don't remember Clash of the Titans? I didn't watch that, really. How can you claim to be a good 80s girl and not, I was, and not have been like over the moon with Clash of the Titans? I was more Wonder Twin Powers, activate! That was more me. Harry Hamlin, come on. Back oh, then, so, oh, well, lead yeah. Lead actor. He was Falcon Crest too, right? Yes. That's as far as I got with Harry Thank Hamlin. Thank you, I'm sorry. I, I got back into the 80s I'm, a little bit. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to take away just a little bit of your 80s card. You know what, Sue, I need a screwdriver to open this. I have a something, something. or something to open this. Yeah, okay. I have a scissors right there on the back. I have a bottle opener right Oh, there. okay, that'll work, I think. Maybe, hopefully. Oh, that's one of those. Crap yeah, it's one of those stupid. I, mean, one I don't know. Ain't gonna work. Yeah, I need something to get on under. I didn't think about those. Yeah, they. Bungalow comes nice and clamped. To it make does. Sure and it make sure that it does not spill. And yes, let me nice. tell you, it does not spill. It does not. You should shake it up more. So. Um, go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say I am using two colors today. We have. Um, we're selling this mustard seed again in the store, but we always, we have our little stock section here. So this is a perfect um, piece to do this on. This wood is awesome. This is gonna be like a decorative teddy bear chair or something to have. Um, it's a neat little decor piece. It's a perfect cute little size. The wood is awesome. Um, so I'm gonna try doing layers, which I love to do, and I feel like it's gonna chip nice on this. So we I've, always say that. I know, but I feel good about this wood. Don't you kind of feel I, good about this wood? I feel good about the last wood, so. I, yeah, that's true. Um, Miss Mustard Seed always does whatever the heck it wants to do. Yeah. Here's what I want it to do, and then we'll see what happens. Um, I have two colors. I've got Grain Sack, which is the super kind of light, light, light gray. You'll see this as I apply it. I'm gonna put that down first on the whole piece. Get that to dry pretty good. And then I'm gonna put Layla's Mint, which is a really lovely bluish, greeny tint. Um, I'm going to put that over top. I'm going to attempt to distress to go down not only through to some of the main wood to see through both colors, but also have the grain sack come through the little mint to give it a little bit of a chippy vibe. So I'm, I'm just mixing up paint right now. It's equal parts paint and hot water to dissolve. It's best in hot water. So I started already with um, the grain sack because that's my first coat. So I'm just going to let that sit while I mix up my kitchen or kitchen scale. I got kitchen you, scale on the brain. Always I almost use kitchen, kitchen scale, scale if, today. If, yeah, if it's Miss Mustard Seed, she's usually using kitchen yeah, scale. Yeah, but I figured you guys just saw that color with um, with our chalkboard that we did, mm -hmm. so I thought I'll just give you a little different. Layla's moon is definitely yeah, it's a pretty one. one. So my little lazy Susan is from IKEA. I want to say it was like twelve ninety nine or something like that. I'm not one hundred percent sure. And I'm using a wide variety of Bungalow 47 today. Mm -hmm. This is Paddle Boat and Topiary, I believe. Yep, Topiary. I've never seen Topiary. And then Lava Lamp. And I'm just going to start by kind of base painting. Um, I'm going to need a couple layers of base, but this is my basic blending. So I'm just kind of adding it. Um, a nice base layer. I'm not going to worry too much about the blending on this first layer. I'm just getting it down and then dry it and then... And then we'll do the next layer. And the first layer, I'm not gonna add too much water. I want it to have a really good grip on my, on my piece. And when I'm done with this, I'm actually gonna make a pattern of it. And then I will add the pattern as a PDF that you can actually download and follow along if you wanna try this for yourself. Yes. Um, and this chair is in great condition, although you know how some of these pieces have these little, you know, 
where you put wood plugs in. I don't even know what these are called. So some wood of these plugs. little wood plugs are missing in this. Actually, most of them are, but you can buy replacements and just, you know, wood glue them in. So that's what I'm going to do real quick and let them stuck in there and then just start painting right over top of them. And they do come in a variety of sizes. They do. This one happens to take a three eighths inch. I had a one inch or one half inch to try and it didn't quite work. So we're going with the three eighths. I'm just going to do that real quick to get these in. So you'll see I'm not, I'm not being overly concerned about my color mixing. I'm just trying to get some of these base colors on the board right now. I'm not, I don't care if they're a good quality blend yet or not. I will worry about that later. Okay. Right now I'm just trying to get kind of all the different colors, these, the three different base colors on my, on my, this is going to be representative of my ocean. So, ocean so that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. I don't think, like I said, I've never seen topiary open before. That's a pretty nice, I love this evergreen cool? kind of color. They're, no, it's the green. It's the, it's green? the dark green. Mm -hmm. I love it. I, don't think I, I just mm -hmm. I don't recognize it. ever seeing it. It's lovely. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, now, I finally had the opportunity to do blending with both Dixie Belle and Bungalow. Mm -hmm. And I love Dixie Belle, but I'm going to be super honest because that's what I am here. Mm -hmm. um, you're just going to get the skinny. I prefer the Bungalow for blending. And the main reason is because Dixie Bell is, so Bungalow is clay and chalk base. Okay. Whereas Dixie Bell is a chalk. It's and, only a chalk, okay. Yeah, and it has a real grittiness to it. And when I'm blending, I don't feel like I get the same smooth blend that I get in the Bungalow. Okay. That's so my. The, the clay helps with that, you think? I think the clay helps with that. I think it's a smoother finish. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's my personal. Well, and you've done it with both. So I've done it with just, both, and 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 I will tell you, not everybody has the same experience, right? Yeah. That's the thing. Is some of us, we're all unique personalities, and the way we do our techniques and the styles that we have all lend to different things. For me, I prefer the bungalow for the blending, right? But I think it's less friendly for starters if you were doing like base painting a table. Okay. It's not hard, it's just maybe it has less grip, less grit, which is like what makes Dixie Bell so great for base painting a chair or a table uh -huh. and getting that nice deep um, saturated color right off makes it harder for blending in my opinion. What you need? Um, I need a spray bottle. Spray bottle. Not the alcohol. <laughs> yep, I took that one off the table. <laughs> Even I, though Sue was so nice to write alcohol on it, we still grab that sucker and use it. And it's so just, often. Yeah. So now that I've got my base, I'm just going to give it a light mist, um, just so that my next layer goes on nice and smooth. And I'm starting with my grain sack. I'm going to continue to mix milk paint. As you're using it, you want to kind of keep mixing it so the sediments don't settle into um, a little clump. You kind of always want to move it around. And again, this paint's going to do what the heck it wants to do. I didn't sand my piece first, so I probably should have, because this did have a little bit of a high gloss on it. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if I should have probably primed it. Oh, having trouble sticking. Um, yeah, I mean, if I were, if I were taking my time and letting this dry naturally, I wouldn't, but I'm going to try to make it happen anyway. That's right. Oops. I'll flick you over here. I get kind of wild with the milk paint. I'm going to use I a little less water. Mm -hmm. The water doesn't, when I added the water, probably didn't help that for not sticking. And this is the first coat. The color is just going to be super light. Yeah, it depends on the wood, honestly, and the day, and the color, and the person painting. Miss Mustard Seed's gonna do what it loves, and frankly, that's why I think Melissa and I both like it so much. It is. It's, I, I look at it like, you know, there's very few su genuine surprises in life. Right. And this is a harmless surprise. It really is. So, you know, don't necessarily plan on doing a custom piece for somebody in that. I mean, I guess you could, but you could, but they better be prepared. Aware that it's... They better be prepared for the fact that you don't know what you're getting either. <laughs> That's exactly right. Like if they're like, well, I want this part chippy and blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, nope. 
it'll chip where it wants. And I, you know, like with any paint, really, you can force distressing, but it's not the authentic chippy look that you get yeah. with just natural chipping over time versus like sandpaper distressing. And if you don't want any chipping, mm -hmm. you can use the bonding agent. Yep. And that works great to avoid any chipping. Now, is that the stuff that's purple? Yes. Yeah, that's... It's yeah. not purple. It's that you added it to black, I think, or a different color that made it purple. Isn't there a Miss Mustard Seed product, though, that starts out purple and dries? No, it's that what you added it to made it purple. Uh, okay. All right. Just remember something about purple and being freaked the heck out. Yeah, you were definitely freaked out. <laughs> and that way is the funniest thing ever. Oh, my God. And then it was after. She's like, oh, didn't I tell you? Oh, no, sorry, I forgot. And my head is like, all right, I'm standing up. That's all right. I'm done here. You can see the piece. That's more important. I do have a head. It's just, it's, it's, it's out of the end. Teresa's head is cut off. I'm my head is gone. There. I promise. That's unless you have to watch me yapping. All right, so, I'm going to see the back of this just for a second. I'm getting this first coat on pretty, I mean, it goes on really quick, and the first coat of Miss Mustard Seed is usually the ugly coat, and a lot of first coats, frankly, are kind of the ugly coat, but Miss Mustard Seed, it's like really ugly sometimes. It's just real streaky, which is absolutely 100% fine. This will not be the be-all, end-all. Now, for blending with what I'm doing here, my opinion is that adding two or three layers actually gives you the best blend because it gives you a depth of color in between, especially because we're gonna distress this and sand back a little bit of it. So having multi-depth of color in here really adds a lot of character. Cool. And I am gonna sand this back enough when I'm done that you'll see the blonde wood underneath of the actual Lazy Susan. Um, so if it's lifting a little bit in some areas, like what I just did right there, <laughs> I'm not gonna worry about it. That was me touching it when it was still damp and that's maybe not the most, yeah the smartest thing to do sometimes. It's all good. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna bring it up there so you can kind of see how it's starting to blend out. I'm gonna do one more layer. And again, I'm not gonna worry about where I just touched it and lifted it a little bit, but you can start to see the colors. And this goes really fast. Um, you'll notice that I'm not trying to do perfect blending like if you were doing an ombre or something like that. And one of the keys to what I've been doing is using the same brush for every mm -hmm. color so that what color is already in the brush actually ends up being sort of mixing. Kind of helps blend with the rest right, of them. Right, it sort of mixes with the other colors. Gotcha. So who do we have out there today? What you guys do this weekend? Anything fun and exciting? Any good dumpsters, yard sales? I always ask people if they've been in a dumpster. Do you think a lot of shows are like that? Have you been in any dumpsters been lately? In dumpsters lately? How many audiences? How many people have viewers that were in them, that That's were so in funny. dumpsters? And what kind of audience do you have? Right. Amy Chong is watching with us today, and apparently she's referring us to her friend Donna Button. Love oh well, thank you so, so much. Thank we you. Love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We picked up quite a few viewers on YouTube over the weekend. Very nice. Very, very nice. So if you haven't, if you're watching here on Facebook, be sure to go check us out on YouTube as well, if you don't mind. And we're at Rave Home Staging on YouTube. And for those of you who've come over here from Jamie Ray, uh, we thank you, thank you, thank you. And I am Monica, not, mm, I am uh, Melissa, but occasionally. I was gonna say, did you just accidentally call yourself that? Or you did that on purpose? I did that on purpose. <laughs> I, am, I am frequently referred to as Monica. Hi, Jamie, right? She did it again on she did it again on Saturday night, right? Didn't she? Oh my gosh, which is funny. She didn't she didn't call me Monica. She said, it's not Monica, it's <laughs> Melissa. Uh -huh. Just making sure she doesn't say Monica. Right. It was really funny. We've gotten a lot of shout outs. I had to I had to do a super chat on uh on Saturday because I didn't have to, I chose to. Right. I did super chat on Saturday because um I think that we have gotten a shout out almost every single weekend since if they are stenciling we have gotten a shout out Yay. since we did our our jrv stencil video on school Jamie's getting good. that's awesome 
just want you to know that Limbidi is watching and she was here watching your demonstration on Saturday. Oh, well, thank Very you. Very cool. Thanks for tuning in. I'm almost getting to the fun part of the Kraken, but I um, need a good base to start that over. And you'll notice, so I said that I would give, um, I'll give a template, like I'll draw it out exactly what mine looks like at the end, but I usually don't use anything. I don't usually use any kind of template when I do these. I do it all freehand, and I really encourage you, after you got, feel comfortable with the brushes, to do it freehand. I think that it's much more interesting, even if you kind of have one that you look at as um, sort of an inspiration piece, mm -hmm. that you look at it and then and then you kind of make it yours a little bit. Kind of personalize it or customize it to exactly. what you can do, yeah. It's just creativity right there. That's right. And then everyone is just a little bit unique. And actually, frankly, I find it usually takes less time, which is one of the reasons that I do it. Instead of setting it up and tracing it out. Yeah, when you trace it out, gosh, it just, yeah. It feels like all that setup and prep takes forever. Right. Okay, so I'm super happy with this base blend. You see that from any way it swirls, it feels very, very organically ocean. I've got my my darker color, my dark blue, my light blue, my tealy blue, and my dark green, which is like the depth of the ocean. Love, 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 love. I'm gonna use some 220 sandpaper, and I'm just gonna give this a really soft sand. You don't even have to use 220. This would be, actually, I'm going to use, use, can you bigger? grab that one for yep. me? This is like old, this is still 220, I think. Yeah, it's just an older one. 220, but it's been used a lot, so it's softer. It's, it's not like brand new. <laughs> um, you know, it's already kind of worn off, and I'm just going to give it a super light sand. I don't want to, this is not my, this is not my distressing it. This is just sort of pulling up some, anything that's got like a raised to it, any little bumps, and you'll see because, I didn't do any sanding or priming. Um, I have pulled a little few things and it's not a problem. Remember when I'm done, I'm gonna really sand this down and distress it. So I'm gonna get down to that raw wood at some point anyway, and I'm totally fine with it. Okay, so now I, my brushes are no longer in this, but I'm gonna use the Ranger Artist Brush Series. We sell these on Rave Home Collection as well, ravehomecollection.com. And I'm not gonna use any more topiary, so I'm gonna set that aside. I am now gonna mostly use lawn chair. I'm still gonna use my paddle boat, and I'm gonna add in some swimming pool. I think great names, too, for colors. I <laughs> just love it. Okay, Sue's gonna add in this one for me, I think. Meanwhile, I'm just trying to dry my first coat of grain sack just to get a base for either another coat of this or start with my Layla's mint. Right. So I'm gonna now think about how I want my crack. And I want his like arms going everywhere. And kind of one of the things I know is I want at least one arm to kind of come across my board and pretend that it kind of curls off over here and then come up to a point. So I'm gonna, my main tentacles, I'm gonna use my one inch brush and my main tentacles are gonna be the um, paddle boat. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna draw with holding it straight up and I kind of use my pinky as a guide and I'm going to make him wider and going to a skinnier point and just sort of tracing, okay? And then I'm going to pretend like he comes off this way and he comes back this way and he's going to kind of come to a point and he gets a little bit wider. So this is my first tentacle. Can you see? And, and is it just me, or am I literally the only one that didn't know another name for octopus was a kraken? Was a kraken. I didn't know what the heck she was talking about. A kraken like a I, I just have never heard that before. What? Isn't a kraken like a massive octopus? It is. It's it's a Greek mythology. Kraken is a Greek mythology. Okay. It's a god. Kraken. Release the kraken! <laughs> Haven't you ever at least bought like Kraken Spice Rum mm -hmm. where it's got a giant octopus on the front of it? God, you'd think I had, but no. God, that is so good. In the Kraken Spice Rum is so, so good in eggnog. I love spice rum. Holy moly. Well. It is 
the rum. It is the rum for eggnog. Oh, you and Patrick would get along fine. He loves eggnog. Oh, I make some good Damn. eggnog. Damn. Of course, it's been years. Maybe so. you haven't had the right eggnog. That's very possible. Maybe you've only had like grocery store I eggnog. Pretty much have. Yeah, not like homemade eggnog. Uh, I think you're probably accurate in that statement. Yeah. Well, if Patrick likes eggnog, he does. Then I'm gonna make some eggnog, gonna and you're gonna have to try it. All right, I'm willing. I'm totally willing. I'm gonna actually decide that that needs to curve a little more this way for me to make sure that it feels like it's it's attaching to this tentacle. And I do this so that I'm doing it basically tentacle tentacle by tentacle, so that it like I'm not confused at which way my angles go. It's a weird thing to talk about on paint day, isn't it? Tentacle. It's it's tentacle. tentacle. Tentacle by tentacle. We talk about tentacles and kraken and dumpsters. And eggnog. And eggnogs. Maybe the, maybe the kraken is in the dumpster and he's reaching out with his <laughs> There you go. And he's going to come out with a little cute suitcase. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Just, every time I talk about little baby things and little cute things, my voice goes up like where only dogs can hear it. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Oh, my so let's see. So that one's going like this. And I think I want... Um, I think I'm gonna have another one, um, kind of a big one that's gonna come down this way. Good looking tentacles there, Lauren. Thanks. Oh. It's kind of coming like this, and then he's gonna kind of come up here also. And I did decide to put a second coat of grain sack on just to give it some good coverage before I cover it with that beautiful blue. And I'll show you in a second here. And how you choose to do this is entirely up to you. Um, if you are free handing it, I'm just kind of randomly choosing what I think will work. Exactly. And it's not like you haven't drawn a free handed Kraken before. It's not like I haven't drawn a free handed Kraken. It's not your first before. time. It's not, not my first rodeo. It's not your first crack at a Kraken. Oh, oh. See what I did there. I see what you did. This is why they watch us. <laughs> This is where the action happens. And they say dads have the, the worst jokes. <laughs> oh Somebody was saying that we were funny this week, and I'm like, that's not really. That's... She's, she specifically said that she was watching us. She says, not only do you ladies teach us things, but you make me laugh. My husband had to come into my sewing room <laughs> and find out what I was laughing at. And I said, let's be honest. It's not that we're funny. It's that we're, we're a hot mess. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> We're a hot mess, and and it's just hard to believe that that anybody is that big of a hot mess. Exactly. We're okay. Like hot mess. So I feel like that is enough tentacles. Don't you think? I think that's enough tentacles. Oh, I think that is. Perfect. I think that is enough tentacles on my little kraken. So um, again, if I were home, I'd let this dry, but I'm not. But so not for sake of time. So I'm gonna break out the heat gun again. I assume Heather's getting that. Probably delivery. More goodies. What was, what? I, I was, feel like there's a Saturday night skit or something that should be happening. Uh, oh, uh, like, okay. Lancer. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> what? Some kind of a Saturday night live. Doorbell ringing and somebody answering the door. I feel like I want to, like there should be a skit happening right now or something. In my head. I don't we know. can create one, but I'm not that creative. I think of the Eddie Murphy, Mr. Rogers neighborhood. <laughs> Love this. Love me some Eddie Murphy. Plus he has a cool last name. So. <laughs> Which will be mine in two months. No relation. <laughs> we don't know that for sure. <laughs> what do we really know for sure? Nothing. We know nothing. Death and taxes. Do my hair because I have enough paint in it already from earlier today. Although Why I just, you never put your hair up? I don't even know. I know. You know what? I have a scrunchie. I don't want to pee. She even has one. I yeah. do. And I'm like, I'm just, well, you guys can't see my ears anyway because I'm not going to sit down. So <laughs> you'll never Shh. know. Yo. This poor girl is afraid to pull her hair up even though she's dying because she doesn't like my her ears. ears are like little radars. And her ears are fine. Fine. And I can move them too, but I won't do that. That'll be <gasps> my mother shift. can do that too. Yeah, my dad's it's really me. weird. It is weird. And my nostrils flare when I do that. And again, folks, that's why you watch us. Oh, gosh. 
I'm gonna have to give a the awkwardness. You'll have to show Phoebe's because you know I don't have a relationship with my mother anymore, so I don't have my mother to show my grandkids that that nifty trick. It's fine. No, you just try and teach them to touch their their nose with their tongue. That's right. That's oh, that's my magic. The old school good joke. That's a good one. No, mine actually reaches. Oh, oh. See, look. You will not see this on any other YouTube show. It's insane. I I can tie a cherry stem with my tongue. Well, I did it <laughs> That's once. That's an entirely different show. I know, I did it once, and I'm pretty sure it was an accident, but I almost choked. But anyway, that is another show. But see, we are multifaceted, multi-talented here at Rave Home Collection. My kids have a hard time doing that because my husband's upper lip is small. Like, it, it raises, and my kids all have that, and all my grandkids have that as well. Aw. Um except for Phoebe's, who isn't genetically mine. Um, so she, my husband married her mother. Yeah, my husband, my son, married her mother. <laughs> like, it is definitely not that kind of show. What, oh, what sorry. kind of this is going on? Or that state, anyway. Um, my son married his mother, so you know she's a, she's a step, but we don't consider that. So anyway, so she can, she can almost do it, but my grandkids will never, and my kids have, um, Paige has managed to stretch her tongue long, tongue long, she had to practice, practice. But that, that little weird short lip thing makes it really hard for them. Weird short lip thing. I was watching. Hi, Hello, Anna. Miss Anna Lou. I believe Miss Anna did. I feel like I feel like I remember seeing a text that Anna did some thrifting. Oh, when well, doesn't she thrift? You? She's a good thrifter. I feel like with her mom or something. And I could be wrong. And she was and in maybe, here yesterday. Her and mom maybe I'm is imagining rushes. Maybe I'm I'm imagining things because sometimes I do that, but. Okay, so now I've basically second coated my my Kraken. Um, just basically going over it again with the paddle boat, uh, doing a second coat, and I'm hitting up the sides here too. I'm gonna steal the heat gun real quickly. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just hitting up the sides so that it's consistent on the side with the front. Lovely blending of colors there. I just love a good ocean blend. Throw that in there. So while she's doing that, you can see my Kraken, my Wheel of Wheel of Kraken. Wheel of Kraken. Wheel of Kraken. There goes the voice again. It's been a wheel of Kraken. It's a wheel of Kraken. It's a wheel of Kraken. Oh, I just made me dizzy. Oh well, that's alright. <laughs> it's all good. Do okay, need? so actually, I don't even actually have to let this dry because my whole point here is blending. So I was using the one inch brush from the artist brushes, and now I'm gonna go for the half inch brush. Um, and I'm gonna start blending in my other color. So I made my Kraken nice and dark, and now I'm gonna go in with, um, what was it? My colors are Swimming Pool, Lava Lamp, launch and uh, Launch It, yep. And so I'm kinda gonna decide how I want to layer these out. So I'm gonna start with kind of my medium tone which is my swimming, yeah, my swimming pool. And um, I'm not gonna worry that these aren't super blending when I first put them on. So I'm just gonna start, think about if the, if the light were casting down into the water, you're gonna have high and low, and it's gonna be mm -hmm. a little wavy because you know when you're seeing water and lights in the water, it's, it's kind of meds. moving. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start kind of pulling out some some highlights and lowlights and creating those. So I'm gonna use my my lightest color, sort of at the what I think is the top, because I'm air quoting, the top of my tentacle. And I'm gonna use my darkest color um, sort of underneath and I'm gonna sort of blend them because it's not really gonna be completely straight. So basically I'm gonna go down the sort of the middle, start going down sort of the middle of my my octopi. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of water so there's a little less drag. Honestly, she did no yard sales this weekend because it was so rainy this weekend. Yeah, yes. it actually was. I need to find a good estate sale. They're few and far between anymore. Oh, are you kidding me? They're every weekend. I mean, I, but like near me, I'm lazy. I don't like going, but so far. Estatesale.com, and they'll, they'll send them to you. Okay, I'm willing. I want to go back to North Carolina and get some more. Yeah. Those troughs, troughs are ridiculous. I could have filled my van with them. Did you sell out of them this weekend? Two out of four. Two left. That's it. 
and I swear it'll be worth seven hours to go in there and buy 40 more of them. Oh, I could just kick myself. They make great little flower boxes. There, and Anna has them staged really nice downstairs, upside down, with like candlesticks all along them as a main Like a riser. Piece. And um, I actually made some risers a couple years ago at Linen and Rust because mm -hmm. I think they're great on a like a Thanksgiving table because yeah. you need some height because when I mean, you got so much, I don't know about your house, but you got like so much food yep. on your table. Let's not talk about Thanksgiving. It gets me too excited. I know. <laughs> What's your favorite food in Thanksgiving, Miss Sue? Everything. Really? What's your least? Like, do you do cranberry sauce? That's the thing oh, I don't I really love, do. I There's cranberry. cranberry. Oh, my mom. The only if one. you forget the, forget the cranberry sauce, boy, you're in trouble. My yes, mom is are. the exact same. I love my cranberry sauce. It goes with everything. Uh, do you just do the canned, open it up, and, That's and it comes out? Me. Was that a pretty good cranberry sauce? Yeah. Although you know. Publix has a really good uh, cranberry sauce with orange, which I find very tasty. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's still not doing it for me, but okay. And oh, it's all good. So I'm being kind of sloppy, and I'm just adding. If it feels draggy, I'm just kind of adding a little bit of water, and I'm kind of doing about two thirds of my center area. And when I'm towards the end, I'll go back with my dark blue and and sort of crisp that up and then I gotta go in with my circles at some point. So I've kind of done about two thirds of it and it's real sloppy right now and that's totally okay. It gets ugly before it gets pretty, okay? So now I'm gonna go in with my lawn chair and I'm gonna highlight again kind of what I think is the top of my kind of pole. And I'm just gonna work on Kind of going over some of that area that I just did with the swimming pool so that they're kind of touching and they're not really blending as much as they are sort of interacting with each other I'll say like they're they're smudging together but I'm not trying to get I'm not trying to make one color blend into the other color okay. I'm just trying to make them kind of touch each other okay. and overlap and kind of go side to side so you can see on this one how it's starting to have like a almost a rounded feel to it in that center one it's starting to round like that because you have the light and you have the mid-tone all right so i am going to start with my layla's mint as my second coat and again this is just still kind of streaky it's two coats which is fine it's going to be my undercoat more or less so when i put this on i'm going to be a little more meticulous about how i lay it on there and then Gonna dry and hope for the best. Here we go. Fingers crossed. See what happens here. And I am being careful and trying to make sure that I create kind of a line to make sure that it's not crossing, you know, crossing over into my other arm of my tentacle. You don't want to mush your tentacles into one. That's right. right. I want it to be two distinct tentacles. Okay. So here's what's wild about milk paint too. I don't know. You probably can't see this. This is a luck it's green, so it is green. But if you mix it, I'm gonna bring it in a little bit. There's different pigments in it. And I don't know if you can see there's a streak of like red through there. That's one thing I love about the paint. Totally man. cool. I'm not touching it. It'll chip, it may not, I don't know, but it, you can just kind of tell. And there's actually, I didn't quite mix this one as well because it's a little bit thicker. But when I sand, it'll take out those chips and bumps and it should it should sand nice for me. So. But yeah, the red, you just can't, just can't predict exactly what it's gonna do. All right, did I mess you guys up? How are, how are you looking? That looks good. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, so here's how, after I've added the next color, can you kind of start to see some of the dimension coming forward? Ooh. Very nice, very nice. Okay. Just kind of touch the yeah, side there. I forgot how light what that screen is. So you probably I'm gonna wash some of this paint out of my brush just a little bit and just sort of dab it. I'm not trying to get all the paint out of it. I just don't want globs of paint on here, okay? And now I have my last color, which is sort of this brighter green, and that is the lava lamp. And I'm actually gonna actually kind of build this between this light blue and our heavier swimming pool down the middle, just to kind of add some highlight to this area. And again, I'm just sort of fanning it in. I'm not, I'm not trying to blend one color into the next, and it's totally fine that it's streaky because I want I want to see all the colors. I don't want I don't want it to 
be just a solid blend. And you kind of just have to have trust me on this. It's not, it's not really like you're blending, like when you're blending furniture paint and you want it to be like shadows, you want this to be a little bit streaky. Because if you were thinking about looking underwater, it would have some of those streaks to it. And if I feel like I'm getting drag, I just add just a little bit more water. Which makes it so wonderful for blending. Yeah. And unlike DIY paint, which you could totally do this with DIY paint, I'm not dissing DIY paint, but unlike DIY paint where it dries a different color, yes, I can, um, this is really true to its color. So I can see how my colors are blending and when it dries, or when I top coat it, it will be exactly how yeah. I blended it out. Yeah, you're not gonna get much change like you do with some other products. Yeah. I know like Connie, um, I think the last name is Hem, okay, maybe I don't know her last name, Hem something. Um, she's the Connie the Painted Photographer. She uses, yeah. huh? Yeah, I don't know who you're talking about. She uses DIY paint for all her painting. And she does an amazing job and I love what she does. I just have a hard time because for me, I'm a very visual person mm -hmm. and it's hard for me to figure out what something is if I can't see the color. Kind of see yeah, it kind really of happening in front of you. a lot to know how it's gonna change. Yeah. She's, but you know, she's not a, she's not a newbie artist or anything. Yeah. So, okay. So now that I have that done, now I'm gonna go back with my original paddle boat I'm just getting some of that brighter color out. I'm gonna go back with my original paddle boat, which is the, the base color that I had. And towards the bottom of the tentacle, I'm just gonna go back in and, and again, sort of add some of that streaks um, very lightly, just so that I have a little more, a little more fluid shading at the bottom and it's not like just sort of a crisp line. And that some of those colors kind of come up. Sweet. I'm bring people in to see what you're doing there. And I haven't, I just sort of rinsed out my brush a little bit. It still has a lot of the other paint in it, but just see, I'm just sort of blending and pulling that out. So it's less of a defined sort of streak. Right. There we go. Very cute. Such a quick little way to snazz up a lazy Susan too. And it's a fun gift. Uh -huh. You know, you can whip this out in, in really not much time. And I mean, what a great gift to say, I painted that for you exactly. as a personalized gift to somebody. Yeah, to me, that's just, that takes, that takes some good thought there. And the oh. beauty here is that it's, this is sort of a rustic painting. It's not meant to be perfect. Yeah, no precision exact lines or Yeah, and shapes. your blending doesn't have to be perfect. Like mine is, it's pretty sloppy, frankly, but that's kind of, like, it's kind of the style of it, I think, mm -hmm. personally. Kind of like primitive. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot like primitive. Which I love, as you know, we both love primitive. Like and even though primitive. I put a lot more on the sort of underside, because in the ocean, and because a tentacle is rounded, I am also adding some to the top, and that will actually make it feel like it's, like a rounded object as opposed to a flat object. Give it some dimension, dimension like 3D yeah. or 2D. Okay, we're and if your, if your um, paint starts to lift off the board, like it kind of started to in one place for me, um, you can always dry. You can always bring out the heat gun or just step away for a little bit and let the paint dry. If you're getting too much if you're pulling too much, that could be a problem. I ideally would have done this on a dark board, but I had this Ikea board here mm -hmm. to do this project actually. Um, I kind of wanted to do something that you could see from something you could buy easily as opposed to making it kind of like a cool hack. Exactly. And now I'm just going on my side and making sure that my side has all this sort of colors blended on it, um, which I have really at this point, all the colors on my brush so I'm just kind of going sideways and it's pulling it. All right, we'll see what he says. Hi, lady. Very nice joining us. A little late, but she's here. Yay. Well, better late than never. Okay, so what are you guys thinking? 
cute. Are you liking it? Cute little oh, I'm whacking. Okay, so now I'm just gonna throw that brush in some water, and now I'm gonna use my heat gun and kind of get this dry. How's your green coming along over there? It's not too bad. It's a little bit light, which is fine. It'll just be kind of a mild chippy coming through. I might use the actual hand sander. We'll see what I can get out of this by itself, but just gonna layer it up. And it, again, this is one of those as well. It's not perfect precision strokes. It's not, it's, it's good coverage. I'm trying to get good coverage, but my idea of this is to just have it all chippy and, um, you know, original wood showing through and maybe a uh, green sack showing through and some of the green stain. So I don't know. Again, it's my idea of it. We'll see what happens. You just never know. You never know. Yes, we do have Miss Mustard Seed available for sale now. We've actually had it for a little bit. We just have to get it out and get it merchandised, but it is available. It's fantastic. It's our favorite. It's just... Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Love it. So I'm gonna pull this up and show it to you a little closer. And you can see my blends are perfect. Um, and that's totally fine and totally cool. It just looks really neat at the end. See? Awesome. What are you thinking, guys? Now I gotta put the little circles that turn these actually into tentacles. All right. Little suction cups. Little suction cups. <laughs> Give this a good dry, see what'll chip. If nothing does, I'm just gonna start sanding yeah. away. Lucia says she's excited. She painted a table that she bought for twenty dollars and sold it for seventy. Nice, well done. Well done. Yes. Go. That is flipping some furniture. Okay, so I have sort of a a medium rounded brush here, and I'm gonna. You know what, Sue? So would you dump this out for the brushes in the sink for me and give me some fresh water? It's really difficult to do this without water near your side and what i really like to do is to mix up my paint in the jar and then i use the lid to sort of do my line work because you just need very little because i just enough. need very little mm -hmm. and i need it slightly watered down okay and because i have such a thick layer of paint now, I can see I still have quite a bit of wet paint. If you can see the shimmer, that's how I know I still have a lot of wet paint. And I'm not gonna worry about getting it 100% dry. I just want it mostly dry so that my white doesn't turn into blue. So I have a little jar of water and my little lid that has white paint on it. And I'm just gonna use my brush and pull some into my lid and then I'm gonna swirl out, and I may even use this little rag here. I'm just gonna kind of swirl out my top, like, and I spin my brush like this to swirl off, offload some of the paint on there. And then I'm gonna, so my tentacle goes like this. So I'm gonna think about how I want the, the section cups to kind of, I don't want like a straight line of them. I kind of want them to roll a little bit. So I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna actually start on the skinny area and kind of build out. So I'm gonna kind of do it over my highlighted area because that's what I want up. And I'm gonna make kind of a forward C and a backward C. Uh -huh. I'm not gonna try to make a big circle. I'm gonna try to do Oops. like half circles that semi touch. Okay. Okay. So just like little, little half circles. And if they don't touch completely, it's totally fine. It makes it that much more organic and natural looking. Exactly. Trying to do a full on circle is really hard. Yeah, yes it is. And it doesn't matter if they're perfect and it doesn't matter if they're in a straight line. You know, perhaps real octopi have their, their little um, they're suction cups and, and they're perfectly little uniform and if that's how you want to do yours you go for it right i just want this like this is rustic primitive coastal for me i just want this enough that it reads as an octopus temple i'm even okay if some of my tentacle like doesn't land completely on my octopi mm -hmm. and if i don't like how a circle goes, or if I feel like it's too light, I can go right over it and it doesn't have to be perfect because again, 
This is all about the rustic to me. start doing some hand sanding and then I think I might even whip out the actual electric sander but I'm gonna go get us. I just sanding. love seeing all the different colors that are in there. I know I think the two colors I picked are a little close together but well, it's not even, it's just in the one color, in the, in the Luckets, man. It's just like, so there's like we you got the so red, far. you got the yellows, you got the green. So yeah. read as an octopi. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, so it came across over here. And so I'm not going to start up here. I'm actually going to start kind of right here. So that it's kind of coming across the middle. And I'm going to start to move it. And my circles are slowly getting bigger as the tentacle gets bigger. And shocker, this isn't chipping, but it's all good. I'm going to make it. And one of the things that will help you too in getting um, a nicer circle is if you watch my hand when I'm doing this, um, you'll notice that I tend to use my pinky as a, like a stable surface. So to, to, to do my circle, I tend to put my pinky down and I raise and lower my brush um, with my fingers, but the pinky is what's actually creating a stable. Like I'm not trying to do it up here. The pinky kind of helps you land that circle. Which is much harder to do in the table shape. Right, well, should I stop? No, you're fine. And I'm actually going to, now that my octopus here is getting a little bigger, I'm gonna start making his tentacles. I'm, I'm gonna move from a two row to a three row because it's getting wider. So at this point, what I'm doing is sanding this to make it smooth, at least, because milk paint is the best when it's sanded anyway, because it gets super buttery smooth. So smooth. Yes. And I'm gonna whip out the old electric and really get some distress going in here. Because I am not having it today, Miss Mustard Seed. You're gonna look a little chippy. I swore this was good wood for that. I probably should have waxed a little first. And that's one thing you can do. You can actually create a resist with Miss Mustard Seed Milk Paint, which I didn't think I really needed. You would just wax kind of in between coats, and that would um, allow for paint to not adhere to those portions that you wax. And hence, theoretically, that paint should kind of chip up off of those areas. I didn't think that was really necessary, but it's all good. But Miss Mustard Seed likes to... You know, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. She's got a mind of her own. She's she apparently is camera shy. Yeah, that too. Huh? That too. The variety of color in there is great. It's just neat. It's just, you know, it's just really weird streaks of red. And then when you put a wax, you always have to seal milk paint when you're done. And my personal favorite is a beeswax and it's actually a fusion brand we also sell this it's the it's beeswax and i think it's got hemp oil yeah. in it too and it's just a nice clear sealant for milk paint i just i love using it with it so there's my first full tentacle what are you guys thinking you like it look at how sweet it's all suction puppy and i'm going to do basically the same down here i'm going to start with this little little point and, and get bigger as I go. I think I'm gonna take, I'm gonna wipe this down and take this off the table and sand it over on the side. That way I'm not getting sand dust all <laughs> in, all in her tentacles. Oh, that's a, a new, a new euphemism. That's, you know, I mean, you heard it here first, people. You probably heard most of these things first here. It's scary what they hear here. Seriously, I scare myself sometimes. All right. So let's get now, this. unlike this one where I had the tentacles on the outside, so I had to come a little lower to do them, this one I have on the inside, so I'm going to continue on the inside. Here to be loud. I shall return. 
She shall return. She shall return. <laughs> organic chipping like you can tell the difference between the sanded distressed and then these little cool actual like chippy look distressed but it's still pulling through and I would tell you too that if you let this dry overnight we might have had a very different result on that's one of the yeah. things too that we haven't gotten some of the best results because we're trying to force chip everything exactly with a heat gun and the reality is what you really want to do is to just let it dry overnight. Yep, for sure. Okay, so I'm real happy with my tentacles right now. So maybe the wood was too raw in that one and it's not chipping, it's just soaking in. Yeah, what do you I mean, I think? Should've, I should've waxed. You like I my tennis? also wax over this and add another color and have it chip through to this color. So that is true. If I felt like getting into all that. Jazz. Now, of course you could do this but you could have done this, made it an orange octopus or whatever, you know, I mean, your color selections are up mm -hmm. to you. Um, I made this to kind of match the table that I've already done. Octopus do like to change colors. Huh? Octopus do like to change colors. Mm -hmm. yeah. And frankly, a kraken is a mythical creature as opposed to an octopus. Mm -hmm. Since it's mythical. We can make it whatever you want. Yeah, you can emphasize them and hike them up a little. All right, I'm gonna do a little more white. <laughs> sort of worn out because I can still see some some light where some of the deeper layers of this are the paint is so thick from all the blending and all the layers because I did like three base colors or three base coats plus I did four colors mm -hmm. on the Kraken so there's mm -hmm. like seven layers of paint where the tentacles are that I don't want to do a heavy distress until this is probably sat overnight to be honest but i'll do a little bit of distress and the top i'll do the top coat the full distress and the top coat after this has sat overnight because i do want to let that dry before i really go to town sanding it but right. i will do a little bit of light sanding to give you kind of an idea of how it's going to come out i just want you to know that becky fisher loves it melissa thank you so much Aww. Here. Okay. So I'm just going to go over it lightly right now. Again, I don't want to pull too much off right now, but I do want to let those colors sort of muddle a little bit. And I don't want my, where my, right now my tentacles are very crisp, the little circles. I want them to be less crisp. I want them to sort of stand down a little bit. And I want my octopi, my kraken, 
to blend a little bit more with the ocean. Be a little less distinct. You know, because if you were, you kind of want it to look like if you were looking down in the ocean, you'd be like, do I see something? Do I not uh -huh. see something? Exactly. You don't want him to like be there. You want it to be like, he sort of blended in with the background a little bit. The and reflection of the water, yeah. the sky. And he's there, but you know, kind of barely there. And I may even actually choose to do a dark wax over this for the blonde wood areas to kind of get them a little more rustic. Because I, who here doesn't know that I love rustic? I know that. One or two people might be aware. Of you might know that now. Okay, so this is my octopus, my wheel. Oh, octopus. I don't think my hand's not wide enough to, turn, to do that and spin it. What do you think? Do you like the lazy Susan? Is it fun? Doesn't it make a nice gift for somebody? It wasn't hard to do at all. And I know there's people who think, oh, but you made it look easy. I'm telling you, it is easy. Right. Because none of my blending, remember I showed you, none of my blending was really good blending. It was all, you could see all of it. But now that it's starting to sand down and you have those circles, look at how nice it all looks. None of it was great blending skills. You could see all the lines and all the striations. Mm -hmm. And now with everything done and it all sanded, because of the layers that we did, it all comes out really nice. Very cool. And then, so ultimately, when you're completely, completely done and happy, you would put a top coat over it, right? So I'll to put top coat. I may actually, because this is a Lazy Susan, and I know it's going to be used for dining, what I'm actually thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Fusion Resin. Oh, gotcha. Because okay. that, it's going to create a really nice shine to it, which means that it's going to be glossy like mm -hmm. the ocean. Mm -hmm. And the resin, it's not a true resin. It's really just um, a high shine, <laughs> thick viscous coat so okay. it'll actually create a a nice heavy you can do almost anything and you're not going to penetrate we're actually we actually use this on the floor in our bathroom mm -hmm. when we painted the floors and nothing's getting through that baby right could you put like alcohol links in it and give it just another layer of of watery blueness mm. look mm. at miss sue thinking ahead there look at miss sue thinking ahead well, we might have to try that. I can see that happening. By the way, Holly's watching too. Hi! Hello, hello! So we might have to try that. Because that sounds quite interesting. It does sound interesting. It, it does sound interesting. Very intrigued by a resin plate. Uh -huh. Hmm. It's like a little mini version of the table. Hmm. It's a little baby Kraken. It's a little baby Willow Kraken. A little baby Kraken. And I'm gonna try and let this do a little more chipping on its own. I might actually put a little layer of wax and another coat of the Luckett's Green on it and, or maybe another color altogether. I might end up with Kitchen Scale. I don't know. You'll see I love the color. I don't think we should do you another color. I think maybe just a, I mean. think maybe a little bit of wax. Yeah, I mean, I have the beeswax out. It'll yeah, just but I mean, brighten it out. But I mean, like even like some dark wax or white wax or something where the, where the like maybe like some here. dark wax up in there mm -hmm. where the patterning is. I think that would be really to pretty. blend with the dark. Yeah, I think that would be really pretty. Not like the whole thing. Just, just like highlighted spots. Like wax the whole thing and then just in that highlighted area add mm -hmm. some dark. I think that's a really lovely pretty. idea. So again, so, this is just a little decorative little bear chair to sit in some little girl's decor or in a living room or whatever you think. Yeah, and then wheel of Kraken. A little wheel of Kraken. Wheel baby Kraken. Little baby Kraken. There goes my voice again. <laughs> it be Kraken. Oh. It be Kraken. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. If you are watching this on YouTube, please be sure to subscribe for more DIY and home decor. And uh, if you are, and also to uh, tell your friends, because we're almost to a thousand subscribers. Woo! And when we get to a thousand subscribers, it means we can go live on YouTube also. Oh, oh, I thought I just meant I get pizza and a bottle of wine. Well, that too. Well, we can, oh, right. we can do we that. Can do okay, I'm good. We can do that, but we also want to be able to go live on YouTube. Awesome. And we appreciate y'all's support as always. It's so fun when y'all come into the store and go, hey, hey. hey you guys. It's yeah, like we're so in movie stars. No, <laughs> we're really not. We're really not. But I want you to tell us that we're funny, even though we know it's just that we're... This oh, is just normal. This is just us being a hot mess. If we tried to be funny, it would be... Yeah. Not so funny. No, this is just how we are. Yeah, yeah. But anyway... um. Yes. Yeah, I remember when Matt, I remember when Matt Leatherberry, uh, yeah. when he, he worked for me and he, he's always known me as the boss and he saw me and always as the staging boss uh -huh. really. 
and um, and I went and did a did a uh, continuing education class for realtors on home staging. And he's like, you know, I didn't know you were funny. You must really be funny. I must really be funny. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> anyway, thanks, Becky. We'll be funny again on Wednesday. I'm pretty sure it's because I told everybody to think about getting naked in hotel rooms. Those, those well, people who do that. That's pretty funny. It's really about thinking about other people getting naked. That's in the part that's funny. It's like, you know, like renting a hotel room. Have you ever thought about how many naked people were in that hotel room before you? Well, that's not funny. That's just <laughs> gross. It, no, it's really funny. Well, on that note, ew. Ew. Um, <laughs> I'll explain more about that in another do. topic. Yeah. We got Wednesday to talk about that. For another day. Right? Or you can go find my conversation about shower curtains and it will explain it completely to you. As soon as we're done here, I'm getting on my phone. Mm -hmm. So, All bye right. guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you Wednesday for Thrift All. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your support. We love you guys. Bye. Peace out. Bye, y'all.